Alright, check it out. You get your higher. Right. Just like any other head, you need to line up the marks and get some of the point out here. See here it says EX, so that's exhaust. And that's on the left side or the front of the motor. And you got I in here. Intake. Turn it down a little bit. And ideally, you want to line them up with the case. Okay? It should be on an angle. You want a flat surface, though. So. Alright, so you got your intake and you got your exhaust. But, I think this is how the camshafts were put in this bike, obviously. I broke all eight rocker arms and I guess that's an honest mistake, or maybe someone tried to do their own timing. I don't know what happened to this bike. On this one, you have an eye end also. See, the gears are universal. So if I turn this all the way around, it looks like it's on the wrong side, right? I'm looking at the lobes here. So if we slip, flip this back around here. Now we got the E on that side, and we got the I on that side. And it's lined up with the case. I'm going to show you in a minute. This is how you want it to look. See the lobes? On this particular bike, we got to be top dead center on number two. Okay? So you want the opposing lobes. I've seen the R6 video. I kind of remember how I was talking about that. Let me give you a close up on the back of this. Now, no matter what you see in relation to these marks, if your lobes are set up right and you got your EX closest to the bolt and your IN closer to the bolt, you're going to know which is intake and which is exhaust. Okay, so we're going to assume this is the intake, which we know it is. Flip it around. Line it up with the imaginary case. This one around. So no matter how you pick these up at any time, you'll know you're right. Another thing you can look at is these. Picture this as an A here and this, this triangle here. Got these lines running up. You want these to be facing that way. All right, so we know we got the uh, exhaust and we got the intake. And we got the lobes opposing. We got the lines relatively lined up. And we got our triangle deal here. You can imagine the line. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the uh, cylinders to top dead center on number two, and then we're going to install the cams and rocker arms, and then our caps. All right, all right, we got to bring cylinder two to top dead center. All right, so we're going to turn this crank here. I'm watching the sight glass until we bring number two up. You can do this with a screwdriver too, you can stick it in the cylinder, uh, spark plug hole, and watch the screwdriver rise and fall. We're not going to go through that. This is easier to do. We're going to line it up with the hash mark, I don't know if you can see it. Let me get you closer. Okay, we got some letters. Some numbers. Alright, if you look there. So that says 1T, that's cylinder 1 top dead center, okay, it's on the left side, your clutch side. It's going to give us 180 degrees out, we got to go to 2 for this bike, this time this bike. Alright, there you go, my compression, number 2. 
Okay, so now when we set our cams in, it's going to be proper position for our crankshaft. That's what you want to see. Alright, rocker arms. Get your close up on one here so you can get an idea what's up. You see these balls here? On this side? You want these to rest in there. Like this, okay? And this rides on top of the valve. Right here. I'm gonna do them all the way across. Give them a little bit of oil. All the one if you got it. All of them. Get down the springs. You know, this motor wouldn't sit too long, so pretty good anyway. You don't gotta worry about adjustments right now, we're just gonna lay them right in place. So they sit. Just lay them all in, all eight. Alright, you got top dead center number two. You got the E by the bolt, okay? Your A, your opposing lobe, and your E. Okay, so you know this is the right camshaft. From what we talked about before. With no spark plugs, it's going to move a lot easier on you. You want to make sure you're at two and you stay there. The motor's going to want to float on you a little bit. Set your EX up with the case. Best you can. No slack. So you're going to take that. And you know you want to be set up like this, so if you bring it up, kind of roll it in place. Test it out a couple times. Too tight. Go back in two. Okay, so you got number two on top dead center, you got your cams in, and you want to double check. Alright, so another way you can check this, right, you got 33 rivets. If you look level with the case here, okay. if we lift the rubber up, you can see, see it better. So it's sticking out. Okay, so you go one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, and that half one thirty-three. All right, now we'll go check something else on the other side. Can you see the lobes? So if you got these exact opposite of each other, relatively level, you got your lines set up, number two, and you got your thirty-three rivets. Um, 32, 33. 33 is where you need to be. If you're off, you might want to double check. Maybe the, um, the timing mark moved on you. So with no spark plugs in this, um, <clears throat> the engine wants to run on you a little bit and it'll move really easy. There's only two cylinders here and there's not much uh, friction to hold them in place. So just be aware of that and take your time doing this, you know, work on it. So you got one off right there. I'll straighten that one out. Just inspect them all. I'll go ahead and fix that one and I'll start putting the caps on. Get our mark set up.
Okay. We're all good. All right, you got your timing set up. Now we're going to go and do the caps. We'll lay them in place in here. We'll take the locator pins. It'll help us. This is number one. Okay. It says number one on it. We got a longer bolt in the front. We got a larger locator pin in the front. And obviously there's a spark plug hole, so you can't really mess this up. The direction or the configuration. Okay, so number one. Locator pin here and here. There's one in the block and there's one here. Nice and easy. Length in the front, shorty in the back. Exhaust side. Couple threads so you know you're in there. Got your radiator loose so you can get a little bit of hands in there, in the front. I'll help with the valve adjustment later too. Okay, number three is in the back. Large locator pin, long bolt. One, two, three, four. Short pin right here. Okay, long one in the back. Shorty in the front. Roughly the same height. I'll thread down the same amount. All right, you got one and three. Go ahead and do four. Locator pins. Large ones in the rear. Shorties in the back. Long bolts in the back. Show you gas it's not caught or it's not gonna get caught. And the rocker arms are in place. Looks good. Okay, in order to do number two, we need to uh, put on another part on that side. So let's uh, go over there. Okay, remember this piece? We left all the bolts in place. And we had a real short one on the edge. This locks down the end. This locks down the ends of the cams. There's also lo oh, there's also locator pins. There's two bolts gone. See this indention here? And there's a washer down here. Okay, must be something to do with an oil port, which it looks like there's something going on in there. Anyway, you can examine that yourself. Anyway, there's a large locator pin. Lock this in place. Nice and easy. The short bolt goes on the right, exhaust side. All right, we're gonna tighten these down. You got the shorty on the outside, the long one on the intake side, hand tight. Now in order to do number two, these bolts receive this. So again, your locator pins, you got your large one and your short one. Actually, your short one's here. Smaller one. Set that in. You can install your bolts. Okay, your long bolt goes on the outside on number two. The short one goes on the inside. All right, I'm gonna hand tighten all these. I'll come back and we're gonna start torquing these down in the sequence that the book suggests. Um, I can't really see much of the intake side, but on the exhaust side, there is some uh, stresses on the um, rocker arm, so. You want to double check your timing, make sure number two T is where it needs to be. And everything is pretty much ready to go. So this will be the last time you're in it. <clears throat> so I'll be back. All right, you got to um, torque these down in a sequence.
You gotta torque these down in a certain order to um, 12 newton meters. It's um, 8.5, well, it's, it's actually eight, but we're gonna do 8.5 pounds for 12 nm, okay? And I'll get you close on this and we'll torque them down. We'll go ahead and start with number one, the far right up there on the screen. Bring this one down, then this one down, then this one down, then this one down. I'm not torquing them down yet. Snugging them up. Intake camp shaft's pretty much already flush, so go a little quicker. Okay, I'm on the block. The block. Block. Block all the valves. Look good. Okay, we're getting eight, eight pounds, 8.5 or 12. And then, the reason why I'm saying NM is the book says it that way. There's really no room in this engine. There's 12. Is. It, you know, it almost, I could almost say more, but you know, you just delicate. Do the intake. We'll just go one, two, boom, boom. Pretty much already flush. Torque it down. That's it. Alright, bring this to eight. Okay. This one you can't really get a socket in. It's kind of tough anyway, what I got here, so I'm gonna just do 